G'day everyone, welcome along to a special edition of Footy Feed. My name's Matt Thompson and I'm joined by AFL.com.au reporter Nick Bowen. Good to see you, Nick. Mark Evans is our very special guest, the General Manager of Football Operations. Welcome, Mark. Thanks for having me, guys. Well, you do have to ask off the top about some developing news. I know you don't have too much information, but young Greater Western Sydney Giants player Toby Green has been arrested in Melbourne overnight. Does the AFL have an initial response? Uh, we've had some contact from the Giants, and so we have a, a limited understanding of the story to this point in time. We'll await a further briefing from them before uh, we decide what's next. All right, more details as they come to hand on afl.com.au. OK, let's get into the conversation. Um, the bump has obviously been the dominant story over the past couple of weeks. Has the, uh, the MRP's interpretation, first of all, changed as a result of the appeal board decision? I don't think that uh, if we wind back the clock two weeks, I think we're in the exact same position. What we had was a test in the middle of that to come back to the position that we think is correct. And that is if a player elects to bump, it's really important to try and work out what we mean by when a player chooses to bump. Once he chooses to bump, he must stay away from the head if he causes forceful contact to the head. He'd want to have a very good reason as to why that's occurred uh, for him to escape sanction. And I think that's been reasonably well understood. Uh, and last week certainly uh, highlighted a few things that we think we can do better in the process. Four players, though, suspended over the weekend for bumps. Does that suggest there's still that confusion there and that perhaps the AFL has a bit more to do to clarify it? Uh, no, I, I probably listened to the coaches on this and they're saying to their players, uh, certainly the coaches that I've heard speak about this publicly, that if you have another option, you should choose that option. If you have the option to tackle or if you have the option to smother or you have the option to contest the ball, you should do that. If you make the decision to bump, then you must stay away from the head. You must not cause forceful contact to the head and there are only two ways that you can escape uh, sanction in that case. One is if there was no realistic alternative available to you and I think at the end of the Viney case we're happy to concede that Jack Viney has no realistic alternative in that time frame to be able to do too much different. And the second is if that something occurs during the course of that action that is outside of your control that you can't reasonably foresee. A player ducks into something, a player gets pushed into something. Then you can understand why a player should not uh, receive a sanction in, in regards to that. But I come back to our primary focus. It's about the health and the welfare and the safety of players playing our game. And our rules have to stand up to the test to make sure that we avoid wherever possible serious injury to players. All right, last time you sat with us on this desk, we had an interesting conversation about the video review system and, and goal line technology. Uh, first of all, are you happy with where it's at? And does the AFL need to spend more money to have more cameras? I'm never happy where things are at if they can be improved. I mean, the, the whole notion here is that if we, if we can get it to this standard uh, and if we can find a way to improve it, let's improve it. Let's make things absolutely clear. We are delighted with the way this system is assisti assisting us compared to not having this system. Uh, can we get better? Absolutely. So far in around about 70 games we've had uh, just under 40 reviews. It sits at just over one review every two games. For the most part we've cleaned up the length of time taken in the review. For the most part, they sit somewhere between 25 and 35 seconds. That feels about right for our game. If it goes longer than that, we, it just doesn't feel like it fits our game. So do we need to spend more money? When it comes down to can we improve further, mm. goal line cameras will assist us. The solution is not easy. We need a solution that's robust, that doesn't drop out. It's not easy venue to venue. And I'm, I'm happy to tell you that in, in three or four weeks' time, the two venues in Melbourne will come online and we can genuinely test to see whether there's benefit in, this, in that so system. Just to clarify, though, there has been some speculation that money might be an issue, and it has been in the past, certainly under your predecessor. Is it a problem now, or have you got the funds to be able to fund the system to get the right result? Uh, the funding is all, always an issue, but what we have to do is prove to the world that the funding that we're spending is, is efficient and it's, it's complicated. It'll end up being a, uh, a, a complete refit of cabling and routers and whatever else is involved at the MCG and that he had. And we'll, we'll put in some cameras on the post for all games for the rest of the year from about round 12 onwards. That will tell us what benefit we get. So far, we've had 11 reviews for the season that we felt we didn't have enough information. Of that, we think eight of those reviews will be assisted by goal line cameras. But the question is, how far do you go? 
we'll still have three reviews that we think won't be captured under those cameras. Do we put in another camera on the stand? Do we put in a 15th camera on the stand, a 16th camera, a 17th? When do you stop? We will always have some things in our game that won't be captured. But the, the question for me is, when we get to the end of this year, we'll be better informed than we are now. I understand, Mark, the Etihad roof policy is, is set to change. That I think from having previously been 20% chance of rain that the roof would be closed, it will now go to 50% and that the roof can actually be changed during games as well. When, when is that sort of set to come in? Uh, we haven't finalised that and what we've said so far is uh, we've, we've certainly asked the fans what they think and we've asked the clubs what they think. Uh, I think we'll end up finding a position that is about patron uh, preference, people who are attending the game, their preference when they attend the game. And so far, the, the results have come in to say that if it's sunny outside and it's a warm day, we'd prefer the roof open. If it's cold, if there's a threat of rain or it's raining, we'd prefer the roof closed. So we'll, uh, we'll have a look at our policy to see whether any of that changes. I imagine you expect a little bit of backlash from that if you move towards more of the, the games played in sunlight? Uh, yeah, but I think if you come back to, again, patron preference, then everybody will get that. Uh, if you're uh, a, a club and you want the most sterile environment possible because you've got control over every factor, I know you'll choose that. But when, when we ask what we should do, I think you should come back to patron or fan preference. All right, I want to go to the issue of umpiring now, always a, a hot topic. The question, though, doesn't come from me. Paul Roos has put this on the agenda at his news conference today. Yeah, if there's a weekly a memo from the umpires saying, look, we feel the umpires are umpiring really well at this, this, this and this, but we feel like the 50 metre penalty or the hands in the back rule, you know, so at least fans go to the weekend knowing, OK, let's not call it the rule of the week, but let's say the umpires are refocusing on something that it's a, it's a very, very difficult job. Let, let's be really clear on that. And I guess that's, you know, that's my thing with all the rule changes and interpretations. It's extremely, they've made it so hard for the game to, to umpire. So he says it's pretty hard to umpire, and I think that's uh, something that a lot of people would concede. Is there a rule of the week or anything like that? And I guess just your general response to what Paul had to say there. Well, my general response is when you think you're doing something wrong or not quite right, then you should actually try and amend that. Uh, the, the real challenge for an umpiring in terms of consistency is how do you not overcorrect? So if you feel like you're missing 50 metre penalties, how do you correct to the right level and not overcorrect? Because uh, by, by nature, when you discuss with people, you, you do change their behaviour. The question for umpiring will always be, can we come up with a series of guidelines for umpires where they blow the whistle when they see something infringes against those guidelines and not to overcorrect? Equalisation, uh, Mark, uh, obviously one of the, the big issues of this year. A lot of clubs increasingly having their own second tier standalone teams. I think St Kilda's moving to that perhaps in the future as well. Are those costs going to be included in, in the new footy department cap? I can tell you that that's uh, the most complicated part of this uh, process and we have a working party uh, led by Andrew Dillon, Ken Wood, Ian Anderson. Uh, I sit on that as well and, and we're assessing all of the different variances from club to club, state to state, what's actually fair and there's, uh, there's all sorts of things about state levies or the amount of travel and all those sorts of things that, that we have to find a way to make that equal and fair. All right, we're almost out of time. We're going to jump to a few quick-fire questions that Nick and I have got for you. So just a, a few quick uh, responses to these questions. Names on jumpers, going to happen in 2015? I liked it. I think most of the feedback was positive, uh, other than the fact that we'd all love it to increase in size. So uh, we'll, we'll look at that. Are you happy with the way that the pink vests of, of support staff on the ground are working? I'll tell you what I am happy with. I haven't had one coach complain about a ball being kicked to a runner, a trainer, a medical officer. Uh, if that means we're in pink to, for that to occur, then I'm happy. Could the minimum kick for a mark be extended to 20 metres? Oh, it could be, but uh, that's a discussion for laws of the game committee and for consultations out to clubs. And we're happy to talk about it. Uh, I always try and look at what's the secondary impact from that, and that's, that's a good debating point. Are we going to get the same answer for the prospect of zones on the ground? Absolutely, except I would say that um, our game, I think, I, I think our game prefers to have fewer restrictions on where players can stand on the ground and, and where we can move the ball. And that will always be a challenge if you, if you make a modification in our game to make sure that it still fits the ethos and the philosophy of our game. Almost out of time. Last chance for international rules. 
Oh, no, I think this uh, uh, working with the players, I think we've found a concept here that could be quite viable for the future. Uh, the, the challenge is to prove that this year and, and then see what's next. And how far away do you think we are, Mark, from a, the first female field umpire? I know there's a, a field umpire in South Australia, a female field umpire, who's doing really well. Uh, and I would think that um, as we look at all of our diversity inclusion type programs, I think there's a real opportunity for female umpires. We've certainly got a, a couple of great goal umpires. It'd be a good challenge for us to, to get a boundary umpire or two and a field umpire or two really pave the way. And final question, does Lance Franklin look better in brown and gold or red and white? Oh, you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> I, I think he looked better, fantastic in brown and gold originally, but um, maybe he'd look good in green. Thanks for the chat, Mark. Really appreciate it. We'll catch you soon. Thanks, guys. And That's thank fine. you to Nick Bowen as well. You can read Nick's stuff online here at afl.com.au. That is it from us on this special edition of Footy Feet. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.